as bidirectional light path settings were discussed in the previous video, now we are going to concentrate on unidirectional path tracer. Total path depth is the limit for light bounces. This setting is superior to the free following. So even if you will set diffuse bounces to a higher number, everything above the total path depth will be cut out. Number of the bounces becomes more important when the scene is more complex. So if you are rendering the interior scene and set the value too low, you may get unrealistic shading and general underexposure. Remember that this setting will also affect rendering speed. You need to be careful when setting low values. If you are rendering metal object, you may be tempted to cut diffuse bounces to one to speed up the rendering. However, if you introduce some roughness, material use diffuse bounces too. In path method, you can still calculate caustic by using add light tracing. It will work only for direct caustic. If you have some indirect caustic, like in mirrors for example, check the photon GI cache section to know how to solve this problem. As explained in the first part of the series, this setting is the true power of Lux Core. Light ray setting will control how many percent of CPU power will be used to calculate only the glossy objects using the bidirectional method. When rendering on GPU, you can assign more CPU power to glossiness. The glossiness threshold is the value that allows you to control what object will not be calculated by unidirectional path tracing method. So in this case, it will be every material with roughness lower than 0.05. Let's bring up this value to 0.1. Now, every material with roughness lower than 0.1 will be calculated using bidirectional path tracer. Clamping and Metropolis sampler were discussed in the previous part. That is why now we are going to concentrate on Sobol sampler. In contrast to Metropolis, this one is called dump. The samples are distributed evenly in a pseudo-random way. This way of sampling is faster as it is not testing if the area is important for render or not. Unfortunately, this advantage may become a weakness. When using the same samples count, Metropolis can give better results on more complex scenes. To make the result equal, you would need more samples so in effect longer rendering time. So why Sobol Sampler will be used by many as default option? Because it has better performance and consumes less GPU RAM than Metropolis Sampler. To compensate for the dumb behavior of the sampler, you can use adaptative strength. Noise is not evenly distributed over the render. Higher adaptative strength value will allow the engine to concentrate more power on noisier areas. To optimize its work, engine needs to learn where the noise exactly is. To do that, you can use test step samples value. In this case, it means that every 32 samples, engine will check what are the noisiest parts of the image. That allows to constantly refine computation power focus on the noisiest areas. So if your render is quite slow, it may be rational to lower this value to make adaptation more efficient. At the beginning of the rendering, there is always a lot of noise. You can use warm-up samples that will be added before the first test. So having 8 warm-up samples and 32 test samples means that the first adaptative strength test will be made at the 40th sample. Let's talk about seed value. It works the same for all samplers and allows to render random noise pattern. It is useful for animation to simulate real camera sensor behavior as in the real world we will never get the same noise pattern on the following frames. Hit the animate button and every frame will get the random seed value. The last word will be about random sampler. This is the more primitive version of Sobo sampler and it was implemented for testing purposes. This section contains a little bit more information so if anything needs clarification let me know in the comments section. If not, hit like and we'll take a look at light strategy.